with all due respect, basic defenders, that was their job to defend, stop the ball coming in. Now they're potential match winners. Mm. And we have an authority on the position mm. here. Stuart, what, when and how did the role of the fullback change for you? Um, when, I'm not sure. It's, it's been in for quite a vast amount of time. I think the formation changes within teams that have... have They've not played with out-and-out -out wingers. they played with diamond shapes mm. in midfield. A tight three. We talked about Liverpool. Liverpool are playing three strikers, but quite tight, which means there's a vast amount of space up and down each flank where full-backs have got to get into and back to retreat. So there's been a lot more asked. And also, as well, a lot of wingers have, have sort of become full-backs over time, you know? So Danny Rose, for instance, mm. you know, started off as Moses. a, a left-winger. Moses. Exactly, and there's a vast amount of players that started off as wingers and all of a sudden they've redeveloped themselves and recreated themselves as, as a deeper position. Just how much has the actual role changed in itself when you're a, when you're a fullback now? Um, there's probably more sway on what you do going that way rather than your defensive responsibility, I would say, nowadays. Um, so what, what were your, when you were fullback, what were your instructions? Well, from Brian Clough, your job is to defend. Anything you do on top of that's a bonus. That's exactly what he said to me, word for word. So, and there it was. Mm. But you play to your strengths. My strength was not only defending, but also surging forward as well. So, um, you try and incorporate that. You've got to have a... I think fullbacks this day and age, you've got to have a fantastic engine to get up and down the pitch. That's vitally important, you know, the... The, the kilometres that they put in during a game is incredible. You look at probably the ideal fullback is someone like Carl Walker. Mm. You know, electric pace, mm. can go past people, can deliver across, and al also is vastly improved as a defensive uh, player as well now. I mean, you used to sit in front of Lee Dixon. Yeah, he'd pull you a little bit different. Um, you know, formations in days. It was a more four-four-two. So you played with wingers, and but you know, in the '98 team when we played. We had um, such a great wing on the left-hand side in Mark Overmars who would go forward and score you 18 to 20 goals a season. He wasn't great defensive, but the, the midfield would move across. So Petit would move across into his position when we was attacking, we lost the ball. Vieira would move across and I come into central midfield. We won the ball, we go back wide again. And that's a little bit to do with George Graham, the way he, we set up as a midfield because you had to shuffle across them days. You can see the, the, the funny video of Tony Adams when he's in and out. That was, that was all down to George Graham. Uh, and that was, you know, that was drilled into you every single day in training. And that's why they had the famous back four, the way they shuffled across, and all their arms went up together for the offsides. And that was all down to training ground. That was all down to practice, 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 and you got your dividends when, when, when it come on a, on a Saturday. I mean, and you would be judged as well about how much your opposite number would get past you, how many times mm. it beat you. I'm just wondering now how much Fullbacks are judged on their assists, how many crosses they get. It's in. interesting to see what managers as well. How would they look at a fullback these days? Is it more defensive work or is it more how how mm. can they get forward? I, I certainly think when you're looking for recruitment, you want to see how much energy he's got. Can mm. he get forward? Can can he create? Can he deliver a cross? There's no doubt that. Uh, the offensive side of their game is vitally important. You know, mm. the defensive side, yes, it is important, but I think that's diminishing as time goes on. Are we seeing many former wingers ideally suited to the position now? Yeah. More, more so? 100%. And is that awesome? Because, I mean, do we, do we actually well, have... Wing-backs. A little bit more wing-backs. A lot of people play free at the back now. Not every club, but... You know, you look at Chelsea, Moses is fitted in now. You know, very rarely plays in the back four. Uh, with Chelsea, uh, because he's more suited to going forward. Mm. Probably Arsenal, I can say Kolasinac is probably better in a back three, because he's more attack-minded. Bellerin on the right-hand side as well. Not great defensively. So when they go back into a four, you've got to know how to play that position as well, because one one fullback goes forward, the others have got to tuck around, make a three at the back. Stuart, you know, Stuart tell you in our era, you know, it was one of them where you had to always had to have three defenders. Uh, and, and the centre half would be pulling the other centre, the full back in. If Nigel Winterbent went forward, Lee Dixon would tuck around and, and vice versa. And I'm I think that's why it's a little bit different these days. I'm wondering as well, on the back of what Stuart said, is if there's more candidates for the job because there's less out and out wingers, isn't there? Yeah, yeah there is. Um, mm. And that probably because they're more of a rarity nowadays, and they, it, it sort of puts more onus on the fullbacks to drive forward and get forward. Um, but I think there's a, a natural. Um, progression of being a winger and then dropping back to be that sort of fullback or wingback to play. Maybe the same can apply to out and out fullbacks mm. dropping in to be one of the three central defender partnership. You know, I mm. mean, you were a fairly traditional 
wide right, mm. or you came inside a few times. So where would you be now? Um, I would probably play if they play three in midfield. Um, probably in the three. one of the three, yeah. And, and you could you can push that wide if you, if you needed to, and then you can tuck in as well. And you, you, you try and get in spaces where you're hard to pick up. As a fullback, you can't really go in all the way because that leaves a space for the, uh, the, the forward to run into. Uh, so you try and get in, the, in between. You try and play in between uh, the midfield and, and the fullback. So it's really hard for the left back to, to pick you up. When you talked about as well what is expected of fullbacks nowadays, if you remember Pep early in the season was asking his fullbacks to go into midfield mm. and create overloads in central midfield. So mm. more's being asked of fullbacks really in, in many ways. Yes, you've got to get up and down. Yes, you encourage fullbacks if there's no room outside, underlap and drive in. If you look at Roberto mm. Carlos with a yeah. goal scoring record, he scores because he underlaps and come inside and unload shots. Same with Pep, he's asking his, his fullbacks to go in mm. and create an overload. Fabian Delphi was asking to do that. It's all about keeping keeping the ball though there in, yeah. in good situations. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can't give the ball away cheaply because if you are pushed in right in that midfield and you win the ball back in a good area, suddenly you can peel off the, the centre half and then the fullbacks are out of position. And that's when the two centre halves can get really exposed at the back. The other thing is as well, if you're playing a, th a front three and a midfield three against the back four, mm. who picks up the wide of the three? Is it the full back or is it the centre half? It's the full. You've got to play a really tight, narrow four mm. to play against the three. That's why, and you're quite comfortable with that. If, if that's the matchup, you've got the extra player, you've got a tight back four playing against the three, say at Liverpool. Where the importance of a full back comes is when you've got Robertson tracking up and down that left-hand side and mm. delivering crosses. That's all of a sudden, that is the dynamic, or Trent on the other side. That's the dynamic that causes you a massive problem. Uh, you know, you're happy with 4v3 in the main. Yeah, I think communication is so important as well, Stuart. Yeah. When, when people are changing and moving onto different positions, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to sense danger. Um, and you've got to communicate. You know, he's come here, he's on, on your left-hand side and you've got to know where, exactly where every single player is. I, I'm being genuine here as well. Is it now perhaps a more exciting opportunity for youngsters? Because in the old days, people want to play... Set up forward. Top, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or centre mid, spraying mm. the ball around. Not, people, there, weren't, there wasn't a long queue to play full-back, was there? I'm trying to say this nicely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm going to be very protective of fullbacks now. I think you spend a lot really. of time there. But... Has, has it become not more fashionable, but an even more desirable, and if you like, a more glamorous position? Definitely. Definitely. I mean, listen, I think it's quite glamorous watching the likes of Carl Walker play the yeah, game absolutely. and Robertson play I the game. I agree with you. And if I was a yeah. kid, I would think, well, I, that's a great position. Mm. I can get forward, but I can also defend, defend as yeah. well. So, without a doubt. Mm. I mean, it, the, the, what they're bringing to games, mm. and w when you see as well how um, Harry Kane, and also particularly Morata, mm. with Azpilicueta, the service, the assist, they strike mm. up an understanding with not midfield players or strike partners, mm. but with, with full-backs we or see man, backs. We see so many overloaded midfields now. I mean, where you know, they flood the midfield teams, they try and keep possession of the ball, so full-backs now are so important. You know, because that, that breaks it up, you get the ball wide, get the ball down the outside, and that's when you need runners into the box, and, and then it's all about the quality. And that's why I think a lot of the recruitment would be now, how can they cross the ball? Are they, are they good, decent, decent deliveries into the box? And that's where you probably get a lot of uh, managers and, and scouts looking at players who, who can deliver the ball into the box these days. So in a World Cup here, is Gareth Southgate sport for choice at fullback? I think it's one of our strongest positions in the England squad, without a doubt. You know, I think, especially at left back, I think we've got a lot of good left backs. I mean, mm. Klein's just coming back to fitness as a right back. Uh, Walker as well as a right back. Trippier as well. I think. What would you do, Stu, with um, Walker? Because against Holland, he played as a three, didn't he? Yeah. I thought he had a decent game. Yes. But do you yeah. think he's wasted more in a three, or do you think he's better as a wing back? I think it's because he's got an abundance of riches. Uh, with Trippier's come on mm. and, and looks a real player at yeah. right wing back, that's almost, I wouldn't say it's forced his hand, because I think Walker can develop and mm. he will, the older he gets, give it five years, he'll probably play there all the time, yeah. to be quite honest with you. Do, you. do you think that the conversation is affected though? Because it, it looks from the outside as though Gareth is going to play the three at the back. Mm. So will that affect his thinking in terms of full back? Is he, is he only looking for, for wing backs or? Um, well, I think when you look at all of our 
our know, full back stroke wing backs, they are the same people. Whether it's Ryan Bertrand mm. playing left back or Ryan Bertrand playing wing back, Trippier playing right back or Walker playing right back, it's the same person doing it. But what he'll do is try and say, look, the three at the back I think suits England. You know, we've played yeah. it in England teams and I think it really suits England. Mm. It enables you to bank up as a five when you're under pressure as well. Um, and I think he'll just pick the best man for the job. I, I don't look at any of our fullbacks and think, no, that they're not really wing backs or they're not really fullbacks. I mm. think they do all jobs. do both jobs. Yeah. Again, is it, is it shown the, the versatility that's now come to the role? That's what's expected of all fullbacks, I think. I think a lot of fullbacks are Monreal, they've done it at Arsenal. You know, he was left back, and now suddenly he plays as a, as a free. He's done, done a great job. He's been one of the most improved players at Arsenal. So they can do that. They can pop into that, you know, but free at the back. And Walker showed he's, he's been there all, all, all his career because he didn't look out of place one, one bit against Holland. And, uh, and I think Gareth now go, well, I've got options now. You know, maybe it's Trippier, maybe it's Walker, who uh, Klein may be as well. So he's got lots of options at fullback areas now. OK, indeed. Nice to have options.